All right, next up, uh, fun thing. I know, I think you're probably going to be a little bit more excited for this than I am. Perhaps, I don't know, we haven't talked at length about this. Tell me what you're talking about. Spider-Man Homecoming trailer dropped. <laughs> Talk to me. What uh, do you think? The, I didn't make any notes, but the biggest thing is they announced the release date with it. If it wasn't announced before, it was officially announced now, which is July 7, 2017. So six months from now. Seven months from now. Um... I've watched the trailer once, and I watched the breakdown once, and that's all I've seen of it. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I'll, I assume there's going to be one or two more trailers. I'll probably watch those, but I kind of want to... I'm kind of shying away from trailers at this point in my life. I'm just like, I just want to be surprised when I get there. Yeah, um, I get that. Clearly, Tom Holland, and this is like a, this is a, a high school thing. He's a freshman in high school. Mm-hmm. The vibe I get from it is it's very... It's geared toward kids of that age, which yeah. is like me... Like, eight years ago, yeah. it feels like. So I feel a little older, maybe even a little embarrassed watching this, whereas, like, if I was watching, like, The Avengers, I wouldn't so much, because there's such an adult audience there. Yeah. Um, and I'm even The Amazing enjoy. Spider-Man was different, because he was, like, in college. Right? Yeah. He, well, he just graduated He just school. graduated and was going to move it into college. Um, so he's definitely younger. Um, he has a crush on this girl that's not Mary Jane. Um, her name is Liz, I think. He has this best friend, who I assume was Harry Osborn, but I don't ever remember seeing his name. Yeah, doesn't look like any Harry Osborn I've seen. Donald Glover is in this. Uh, Shocker is in this. Michael Keaton is the vulture. And Tom Holland said on Twitter on in an interview that mm. he's like terrifying, like horror movie terrifying. Yeah, like he's supposed to be real intense. Yeah, like, that's gonna be awesome. I like that. Um, I, also, I also like that they picked the vulture. Yeah, I think because he's a character we haven't seen in the others. That's true. I think we've seen. I think there was like a cameo of his like wings in one of the other episodes. Amazing Spider-Man Two. Yeah. But other than that, we have to see him, and I'm excited. I think we're good. Yeah, so it'll be fun. It'll be different wings than that, um, but still fun. Shocker is going to be in this. There have been some leaked photos of that, so there's going to be at least two villains, uh, and maybe another one, the Tinkerer, mm. might help Vulture with his wings, or Vulture might help the Tinkerer with his stuff, whatever that might be going hand in hand. Yeah. So it's the first Spider-Man in this. I don't know what they're going to do with his origin. Maybe they did that in Civil War. They don't have to do it again. Yeah. Um, there was a breakdown that they think the beginning is going to be uh, him kind of like remembering back to the fight in Civil War with Ant-Man and Mm -hmm. all those people and then cutting between that and him being in high school. So he's like daydreaming about the fight and then his Mm -hmm. teacher's like, hey, focus up. Yeah. And I think it's going to be kind of something like that. So it's going to cut back and forth like that. Um, Iron Man is obviously in this. You see... He's in it a lot in the trailer. In the trailer, he's in it a lot. What? There was a... Oh, that was Guardians of the Galaxy. Never mind. Um, see, in this one, the guy that broke down the trailer did a good job, and I think he made a good prediction. Because at the very end, you see Spider... You see two different suits in this movie. You see the Tony Stark suit with the web wings and just a really sleek one. Yeah. But you also see the original like Peter Parker suit from Civil War, mm. where it's just like sweatpants and the goggles that restrict his view. Yeah. And it looks like at the end of the trailer, in the trailer, he is like laying down in a ring of fire, which we assume he's fighting Vulture, and he has his old suit on. Yeah. So, taken from the trailer and from that image, it looks like Tony Stark is kind of policing him. Yeah. Maybe being maybe somewhat he takes it away, yeah. of a helicopter parent-ish. Yeah, that's what it sounded like. For whatever, because that's kind of the vibe he was giving off. Mm-hmm. So we think that maybe, obviously, there's obviously going to be a tracker in that thing. So mm-hmm. Tony Stark always knows what's going on. Right. Um, they're both in New York, so he's not that far away. Right. He wouldn't give it to him if he didn't have a way to control it right. to some extent. And then also Peter Parker is talking about how he kind of wants to prove himself to the Avengers, mm-hmm. which is kind of just a, ma- um, a theme throughout all the mm-hmm. time. I assume at the end of this movie, he'll be like, I don't need to prove myself to the Avengers. I can do my own thing. Yeah. And that's probably what happens in the in the beginning of the third act and the end of the second act. Mm-hmm. Um You'll, so you'll see that. Um, I assume that Tony Stark is going to come down really hard on him. He's going to take his suit away. And Spider-Man, Peter Parker, obviously being the rebellious teen, is going to be like, I'm, gonna, I'm still going to do this anyways. I'm going to take down the vulture by myself. Because yeah. even I think he says something like that in the trailer. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot of Tony Stark. There's a, there's a funny scene where they're in the limo. Yeah. And the, he's like giving him advice or whatever, and he goes to open the door, and then Peter Parker hugs him. Yeah. And he's and like, like, I'm just trying to open the door. Yeah. So that was funny. <laughs> yeah. um, that was a good time. But we'll, I mean, we'll see. I, it looks like in standard Spider-Man fashion, he's going to be in way over his head, which yeah. is always fun. I also liked in the little, the, he's like breaking, breaking a group of, of robbers in oh, the yeah, yeah. building, and he was just really quippy in it, yeah, yeah. and it made me really happy, because yeah. 
I just think it's funny. So that's fun. I, I like. I just love the fight scenes like that, and I think the Amazing Spider-Man did that really well mm-hmm. too. Had added like a lot of quippiness into it and kind of jokestery, yeah, yeah, yeah. pranky things, and I thought that was fun. And I'm, I'm I hope that they do that well with uh, Homecoming. There's it's a classic cool. scene where the cruise ship or the yacht is breaking in half, and he's in the middle of it, and he gets yeah. his webs out. And it's yeah. like the last scene that very much reminds me of the the train scene from Spider-Man Two, which was epic. Which was epic, but. Um, that's almost like too similar I'm like that's, that's like I know I kind of felt that it was similar uh, I remember when Spider-Man 2 came out and I saw that scene I was like this is, this is the most ridiculous like amazing scene yeah because I mean and Spider-Man was like the superhero movies at the time yeah, so. yeah, yeah. man that was that's a good nostalgia right there I just thought of that so I don't know I, I assume he so I, I assume he starts the movie with the new suit from Civil War I assume the whole first act is him doing things and introducing all the characters in that new suit, and then second act is him probably getting that suit taken away for mm-hmm. being too rebellious, going too far away, going too far. Doing something that Tony thinks is wrong. Yeah, and then third act is him picking himself up, getting on his new suit, and defeating the Vulture. Yeah. Um, he might fight the Shocker with Tony Stark. I mean, there's the scene with them. The very last yeah. little scene is them swinging through the city and Tony Stark flying. Mm-hmm. Um and, but Spider-Man's in his new suit. So either, one, that's at the very end of the movie, and he gets his new suit back, or two, that's at the very beginning of the movie. And it's kind of before there's a wedge in between right. them. But there's also, in the Civil War storyline, mm-hmm. Tony Stark like betrays Peter Parker real bad. I was talking about before. Mm-hmm. So once, so Peter Parker announces him in the Civil War storyline, in the comic books, Right. Peter Parker announces himself as Spider-Man, demasks, which is a big deal. It is. And then, essentially... Iron Man kind of turns his back on him and then even tries to kill him. Peter Parker. Yeah, at some point. Or at least beat some sense into him. Right. Very to the inch of death, it looks like. Yeah. Um, sure. So maybe they're trying to incorporate that into this without so much violence. Yeah. And they're, trying to, they're trying to drive a wedge into that. Like, maybe so even, the same theme, but maybe in a different way. Yeah. So even in, like, Civil War, Spider-Man during the fight is kind of like, I don't know what I'm... Like, what am I supposed to be doing? Like, he's very... Into trying to impress Tony Stark because why? What are you? He, Peter Parker is a sci- is a scientist. Yeah, he's a high schooler. Tony Stark is a billionaire playboy philanthropist. Right, who's brilliant. Yeah, so it'll be like if Bill Gates is like, "Hey, can you like help me do something?" You're like, "Heck yeah, I want to help you do something." Yeah, if he was like, "Hey guys, I like your podcast. Would you like, do what? this for us?" Like, yes, yeah, thank you. Okay, yeah, bye. bye. Um, so that'll be interesting to see. Um, so I think maybe they're they're trying to drive that wedge into where Peter Parker can then because it does you mentioned that it does feel very tied to Iron Man mm-hmm. like he's in it and maybe that's just the beginning I know that with Guardians of the Galaxy if their trailers are at all together not together but at all similar mm-hmm. Guardians of the Galaxy the newest trailer only showed like the first half of the film mm. so there's nothing in there from the second half because he didn't want to spoil anything so maybe. In this one, they also only showed the first half, maybe the first two acts. And mm-hmm. the third act is supposed to be a big mystery. I'm very excited to see how terrifying the vulture will be, Michael Keaton. Yeah. Very interested, interested to see the quippiness, because mm-hmm. that's always Spider-Man's best feature. Mm-hmm. Um, there was no reveal of Mary Jane. I don't know if Mary Jane or Gwen is going to be in this. They might just do... I mean, he might just, just have a high school crush. Me, but, you know? Like, I've, we've seen so many Spider-Man movies already yeah. that, like... Like, I'm okay with that not being... Like, there doesn't need to be a girl. There doesn't have to be There can be one. a girl in the next one. Right. You want. In the future, they can do that, but they... It, every one before this has seemed to be focused so much on that relationship yeah. with Mary Jane that, like, I'm okay with not seeing it. If they have it in there, fine, but I'm okay with them not. It'll be fun to, uh... It'll be fun to see him battling these supervillains, but also being worried about his homework. Like, okay, let's get this over with because I have to do my algebra or whatever. Right. Or trig, I'd assume he would be in. I would assume he'd be in advanced math. Or calculus or something like that. Yeah. Or engineering, I don't know. Yeah. Um, so far, there's I haven't seen anything about the Goblin. I don't think they will be. I don't know if Oscorp will be mentioned. I, th- I assume we'll probably see Stark Tower, which is now Avengers Tower. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if there's going to be any other mention of any other Avengers or if there's going to be any cameos. I know that in Thor The Dark World, there was a secret cameo of Captain America... Not a secret. It was like it was right. It's pretty there. obvious. Yeah, but nobody knew about that until the movie was out. Right. So there might be something similar to that. I assume we probably won't see Captain America unless it's an end credit scene. Right. Very similar to the end credit scene of Civil War where Captain America calls Peter Parker. Yeah. He's like, "Hey, I could use your help on this or something like that." Mm-hmm. Um, 
I would ex- of the characterization, I think Falcon would be the person to show up more so than Captain America because Falcon seems to kind of be that. Uh, the middleman, maybe? The what? The middleman? Not so much the middleman, but the charismatic person. Like, that would try to convince someone to do something. Mm-hmm. Whereas Captain America would, like, like, it's your duty to do this. Like, you mm-hmm. have to do this, do this, this, this. But Falcon would be, like, the cool guy. Yeah. Kind of smooth talking. Yeah. Or Black Widow, but He's Black Widow's a little Black too Widow. a little too old. I think for, so. A little, she's a little too mature for high, a freshman in high school. I would think so. Yeah. I don't know. It'll just be interesting to see what happens with yeah. Iron Man and Spider-Man. I honestly think there's going to be a wedge driven between them, mm-hmm. a la the Civil War storyline. Which line. is fine, because, I mean, that's like Tony Stark. That's his character. He does that with all of the other superheroes. Yeah. He pisses them off. So what do you, what do you think? Because you're a big Iron Man fan, and you, you even said that you think there's too much. Well, yeah. because well, you're, I say you're that be, worried there might be too much. Like, I love Iron Man. He's for whatever fake, reason. For whatever reason, and we've debated that hotly before. Um... But I like Iron Man a lot, but we've seen a lot of Iron Man, and I think this is a good time to expand the Marvel Cinematic Universe in a way that brings freshness, and I'm afraid that if there's too much Iron Man, that this won't feel like a Spider-Man movie, it'll feel like an Iron Man movie, or okay. like an, or just like a Iron Man Spider-Man movie, you know, like I don't, I think it's okay if he's like a support character who's like in it a little bit, who kind of like guides him to some extent which I think is what they're going for kind of maybe like even it would probably be like a behind the scenes type thing but like yeah. I assume Spider-Man with the suit that Tony Stark made right. has an intercom in it mm-hmm. that Tony Stark would be like why, why are you out like on the right. docks at midnight I'd be see like uh, kind of like the Nick Fury thing mm-hmm. like if he's that for him I think that's fine yeah but if he has if he has too much screen time I, I, th- I could get annoyed by it just because I, I want to see Spider-Man at a Spider-Man movie I, it's just there's a balance there. I think yeah. it has to be that has to be met for it to for it to be good. And I'm afraid because Tony is one of the most popular characters in the MCU that people are going to be like, I hope that the, that Marvel is not thinking, oh yeah, we should give lots of screen time for him because mm-hmm. people like him and they want another Iron Man movie. There, but even with Captain America three Civil War, there wasn't a lot of Iron Man, right? Which is pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I thought Civil War was very good. Yeah. No, I mean just the fact that there that he was even the antagonist, uh, an antagonist. He wasn't in it that much. Yeah, he was kind of like a supporting role. I mean, I guess you'd call him. He was there. I mean, he was there a lot, but it was primarily Captain America. I think he was there movie. like an, like there wasn't. Where well, I'm just like, oh, this is too much Iron Man. Right, it was like maybe a third of the time. The only time where you could possibly say that is when they're finally showing him, uh, Prison Forty Two, mm-hmm. out in the ocean. Yeah. But you kind of you kind of need that to set up the scene, but maybe mm. not. But at the same time, it's whatever. He has a cool helicopter Iron Man suit. Mm. That was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. Um, so I don't know. Maybe hopefully they're just using Iron Man in the trailer as a way to get people in. Not that yeah. I think they need to, because Spider Man's awesome. Yeah, Spider Man is awesome. But I hope there's not. I hope it's not like Spider Man fatigue. Like you know how we get like Call of Duty fatigue and like franchise Star Wars fatigue. And, no, that doesn't exist. That's impossible. Yeah, no, of course not. No, never happened. No one ever feels that way. You know, just like I hope it's not like Spider-Man fatigue since we've we've had like. I don't. He what, he. Five. A lot of people five really like him in Civil War. Yeah, I mean, I thought he was good in Civil yeah, War. Yeah, Civil War. Awesome. But I also think that we're like a little bit of fanboys for like all these heroes, and like I know people who just like don't watch superhero movies anymore because they're, so, they're like there's tired. So there's like five out. Five or six out a year. Yeah, like there's so many superhero movies. Yep. They feel like they're drowning in it. So I don't blame them. I understand. I, I get where they're from. I particularly still will watch them, and maybe there will come a day when I'm like, yeah, you know what? This is the same thing over and over again. So pretty much every DC movie that's coming out. Well, I don't generally go to DC. Well, I do go to DC. We movies. have, but we have, but I feel like we've gone because almost of, always regretted it. We feel like I think we do it out of. A feeling of obligation as podcasters to do it. Like, that's how I feel sometimes. Like, we're going to this movie because we're going to have a podcast episode we're about, talk it about it. Because it's in the nerd realm and we need to cover things. That's how I felt when we did Suicide Squad a little bit. Were you not excited for Suicide Squad at all? I, I, you know, I was like, I was interested, but I wasn't like excited. Like, I was like, I could have waited till it came out on Blu ray. Oh, yeah. Like, I could have done that. But Doctor Strange, though. Doctor Strange, I was a little more excited for. But that's also Marvel, so. And they have a good track record. They have a better track record, for sure. So, I mean, that's just one trailer. I'm excited to see what happens next. Yeah. Um, 
I I there's like a million trailer breakdowns and I only watched one. I don't want to know everything before the movie comes out. Mm-hmm. But if there is another Spider-Man PS4 trailer, I might have cool. to break that down. Yeah. Because I did that. We did that on our ta- on our channel once. That yep. turned out pretty yep. well. It worked really well. You did a good job. Well, thanks. Uh, last thing I think we have to talk about um, is there's some reactions to Rogue One right now. Bah, Star Wars fatigue. I uh, know Tony I'm, has it, but Star I don't. Wars. I'll never have fatigue. Of Star Wars. A Rogue One story. Could you click on the Star uh, Rogue One? Could you click on Wars? The, could you, could, could you, you want to click yeah, on click the on, link? Yeah, I want you to click on my link I posted. So, uh, scroll down, please. Uh, there are I a rebel. group of people who have seen this movie early, for whatever reason. Uh, George Lucas is being one of them, which I don't know how much you, like. I kind of feel like we should trust George Lucas because he like made this universe, but at the same time, people like hate George Lucas. Well, I mean, he made 1, 2, Because three. he also made 1, 2, and 3, and... He made one, two, and three without any help, as opposed to four, five, and six, where he had editors who like destroy, like shut down all his bad ideas. Yeah. Um, so anyway, he said he liked this one better than seven. He thought it felt a lot like a lot more like Star Wars than Episode Seven did, which I, I thought Seven felt like Star Wars. Um, yeah. Uh, Maybe a little too much. So some tweets that were tweeted out that are non-spoiler. Um, Will Wheaton. From Star Trek, also does a bunch of other stuff. What does he do in Star Trek? He in the Next Generation. He's Wesley Crusher. He's the pilot. That means nothing to me. Keep going. Okay. Uh, he's also just like general nerd culture guy. I don't know if you've seen him before. I mean, I know who he is, but I know he's in Star Trek. Yeah, that's that's where he got to start. Uh, I said the last time I loved a Star Wars movie as much as I loved Rogue One, it was 1977, um, which he's a lot older than I thought he was. That makes sense. Uh, some other people said, fantastic, incredible action, both planetary and interstellar, and looks gorgeous. Most importantly, it feels like Star Wars. Um, one thing... Uh, can you scroll down a little bit more? Um, I think somebody said... Uh, yeah, so early on in this development, it was said that this movie was going to be like a gritty war movie. It wasn't going to feel... Um, it's like happy go lucky. There's not going to be any Jedi in it. It was supposed to be more of like a military gritty. What it would look like to be in the rebellion. Yeah. Good old saving private Death Star. Saving. Yep. Saving private three PO. Trying to think of it. private Anakin. Yep. Uh, this is from Anthony Brzezinkin. I don't know this guy, but he said he got to see it early and said people worried about Rogue One not being as being a gritty war film need not worry it's intense relentless you can practically taste the grit so I'm excited for this because I think it'll be like 7 was really kind of like a happy go lucky kind of movie half the time like yeah. like when Finn and Ray are together like there's lots of fun things like they get through the bad stuff and they're like smiling and they're happy and they're and like everything just works out really well for them yeah. in all of episode 7 very happy go lucky um, which I think is fine for like general audience I think this one will be a little bit um, tougher. I think it'll be a little more sad, I'm guessing. Somber. A little more somber. And I think you'll see, like, the relentlessness of the Empire and um, just get a, bi- a bigger feel for, like, what oppression. I just want Darth Vader to go through swaths of rebels. Dude, I, I, Darth Vader looks so scary in the trailer when he walks through the mist and Orson Krennic, the guy with the white yeah. uh, uniform on. Is like on his hands and knees looking up at him, like, oh my gosh. He look, I'm like, oh man, I'm so ready. I'm so ready. That's well, you don't have to wait very much longer. I know, I got like a week left. Uh, so, yeah, uh, just a couple tweets that uh, are non spoilery. Uh, some people, I've, I've heard some people say that this is their favorite trilogy is episode three, Rogue One, A New Hope. I've heard, I guess, a tweet saying that wow. that's their new favorite trilogy. Um, and just been a lot of high praise by some Star Wars fans. For it, so we'll see what it actually ends up being like um, when we go see it next week. So you want to do some uh, predictions? Sure. Possible spoilers. If we're right, spoiler alert. If we're wrong, it's just it's never happened before. Spe- never. We are never, never wrong. Once. We've been right every single so, prediction. Anyway, we're predicting things. Yeah. So predictions. Uh, Jin's dad, Galen, put the. Uh, exhaust port there on purpose to help the rebels. That's my guess. We I, have talked by design. this to death. I know we have. 
That's my biggest prediction. It doesn't make any sense. It's impossible to hit that shot. It's not impossible. That's how they did it. One person in the galaxy can do that shot. Just because he's also a pilot. And has the force. Because he's Darth Vader's son. I think he put the flaw in it. I, and I don't think he's. I don't think it's a flaw. I think. Yeah, it, it totally is a flaw. It's an incredible feat of engineering look, look, to look. have a planet-sized mm-hmm. thermal reaction mm-hmm. only have an exhaust port two by two feet. That's incredible. It's a meter. A meter by a meter. It's a meter, and it's incredible. If you, I mean, when you. That's almost two feet. When by they two talk, feet. that's like two and a half feet by yeah. two and a half. You're, feet. you're pretty close. Um, Biggs, Dark Lighter, Luke's friend. When they're in the uh, room getting their like briefing before they go into the Death Star run, he said people are freaking out. They're like, "How can we hit that? That's too small." And Big says, well, "That's not too bit too much bigger than a womp rat." We used to do something at home like they in their little space fighters yeah. and Tatooine. They would shoot things that were that small. So, yeah, but if you look at the the uh, the port itself, yeah. it's a ninety degree turn. It is. You have to literally curve the photon. Rockets, torpedoes. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think you could, if you got lucky, you could do it without the force. I don't think the force is necessary to do it because they got pretty close before it just like impacted on the surface. Yeah, I think it's, it's so small and you're getting chased by. They only got, they only got two shots in. I mean, if they had enough fighters and they could have done enough rounds, I think someone yeah. could have done it without the force. Sure, but there's also planetary defenses on this moon-sized. True. Thing. True. It's not like they get unlimited chances. Right. They had this chance. But as but as Galen, how he can't put if he's gonna try and you're right. Th- put his thumb in the ear of the Empire. What? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> if he's trying to get back at him, he can't do it in a way that's gonna make it like super obvious, or else he's gonna just get straight up killed. So I think he had to, he had to decide on something that was small enough that people wouldn't really like notice it. But then it, it's still a weakness that could be exploited. We had a similar argument before Avengers, or before Civil War came out, yeah. um, with me saying that Ultron was 100% Tony Stark's fault, yeah. and you saying that it wasn't. I think now the roles are switched, mm-hmm. and we'll find out at the end of this movie yeah. who is right. Yeah, we'll find out. And it's really just his intent behind the exhaust port. Right. And, and I don't know if they're And gonna... if it's even his decision in the first place. Yeah. Because it comes from the it comes from the core, which is what powers obviously the super weapon. Yeah. So we don't know if he added it in there or if it was there already. We'll see what happens. I think that'd be a cool thing if they if that was in there. Uh, more predictions. I think uh, Orson Krennic will die. Who's that? That is the white admiral guy. The white li- coat. White or just coat. White skin. Or white both? coat. Okay. The also evil, white skin. The bad guy. Yeah. The imperial okay. officer. He actually like. From the book that comes before... Catalyst. Catalyst. He knows Galen and Jen, actually, yeah. um, from their childhood. You think he's going to switch sides? And, uh... I, don't think he, I don't think Orson is going to switch sides. I think Orson will die by the end of the movie, though. With his allegiance still to the Empire? And I think Darth Vader will kill him. Violently? What is this? This is rated PG-13. It is. Yeah. I think he'll die. And I think it'll be Darth Vader. Because he failed. Because he, he's the reason why the de- like he'll get blamed for the Death Star plans getting leaked. And this is like you think key he- time when Darth Vader is purely evil and is still true. and like not redeemed. So do you think this do you think it'll be cut to where he, they'll be on the ship about to board the the carrier from A New Hope? Mm-hmm. And before the door opens, Darth Vader just like cuts him in half. And then the door opens, and Darth Vader walks in, and that's the start of a new hope. Oh my gosh, that'd be so crazy! I don't think that's gonna how it's gonna happen, but that'd be sick. I don't think we'll. I, I think what we'll see is the end scene is the we'll see R two D two get we'll get we'll see the plans get uploaded into R two D two, and yeah. then it'll be you'll see someone be cameoing being Princess Leia. They might do like one of those de aging things. De aging things, or do like a. A digital version of her or something, or maybe we'll just see the backside You're of her. We're going to see like the backside we'll of like her a double. or something. And so we'll see like a little bit of her, and then we'll see them get on the ship, and then they'll fly away. I think that's the last scene. That's not a prediction. That's the last scene. Is we'll see that Curly and Corvette take off with R two D two in there. I don't think R two D two will be in the movie that much. Yeah, I forgot about him. So much like Episode Seven, R two D two isn't really in it. Just barely. Yeah. Um, do you have any predictions? Uh, any, any guesses on what's gonna happen? 
Well, I know for a fact that what's his name is gonna die. The blind. The blind guy. The blind guy, because they said that on stage on accident. Dang it. Um, I didn't know that. Yes, you did. Did I? We have talked about that. No, we didn't. We one hundred percent did. No, we didn't. We can just assume that almost everybody dies. Well, I assume everyone's gonna die except for gritty. Jim. And she might even die. We don't even know. I would. I would be so much happier with this movie if she dies. Yeah. Give us a Star Wars movie where characters die. Yeah. Give us great. Just in, in any in any movie, if the main character dies, I'm immediately more inclined to like that movie because they were willing to take a bigger like risk with the movie. Yeah. Right. Like kill off the main character, mm-hmm. someone that you like. That's I mean that's partly why I like Game of Thrones so much is the that's like, kind of why I like nothing I Am Legend. Is, nothing is sacred with it. Oh, I know. Because Am Legend's the end is so sad. I mean, he then he also dies. Too. Then he dies too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Spoiler, guys, if you haven't seen that one. Uh, right. Yeah. Like. I, I think it's so much more powerful when characters, main characters, die, die off, sacrifice themselves, do something that I don't even think brings she, weight to the movie. They don't even need to sacrifice. If they're gonna show how like menacing Darth Vader is, just have him like kill people without it. Like have them running away and have yeah. him just destroy them. Yeah, just like lift them off the ground. Do you think so? In Episode Seven, we had the awesome scene where uh, Kylo Ren stops the blaster bolt. Yeah. Do you think there's going to be anything in here that shows like a Darth new Vader? Force power? Maybe not a new force power, but just just reaffirms Darth Vader as the strongest that's ever been. Maybe I I would like to see because I think the blaster bolt stopping is like the the coolest cool. yeah. Jedi force trick I've ever seen. Yes, even I, even cooler than lifting the X wing blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think it's awesome, and I hope they do. Yeah, I hope Darth Vader like walks off a ship and a bunch of Rebel soldiers just like look at him. And they're, they're, they just, like, know it's Darth Vader, and they're yeah. just like, oh, crap. And he, he just, like, they all, like, get lifted up in the air and force choked, and they all die. <laughs> like a whole regiment. <laughs> not like a whole regiment. That's probably too much. Like a whole squad of them yeah. all together. And he just, like, walks. He like, doesn't even look at them. He just, like, walks he past. Just walk past. And all of them are just choking and, die, and falling out of the gra- to the to the ground when they die. Like, that'd be sick. Oh, that'd be so much fun. Like, what an entrance to Darth Vader if that was the case. Man, that'd be sick. I hope they do. I hope they do something. To show this, us his power. This is... So there's always fight scenes in Star Wars, and if this is the one that's not centered around Jedi, mm-hmm. I think this is a really good way for them to show how strong the Jedi actually are. Mm-hmm. Right? So if Darth Vader is the only Force user in this movie... Which, from what I understand, he is. Show how strong that is against just a normal person. Yeah. Show right? us how unfair of an advantage it is. Yeah. Because everything else has been... And I said this even about... You know, a little criticism about Doctor Strange. It's... Mm-hmm. Them fighting someone that's equal, equally as strong, if not a little bit stronger. Mm. So you can't really tell how strong it is. But what the when we came up with Star Wars Episode Eight, mm-hmm. when we made that up, and we're like, I want to see a war front. I want to see these people yeah. destroying each other. Yeah, we I want, we want to see that. You know. Yeah. I mean, when I was a kid, that's what I did with all the little figures. You know, I wanted like a big old pitched battle. Yeah, you set like, up like, like two hundred figures, battle, right? and then yeah, like except the Hawk battle. That's why instead I of an AT AT, so it's just Darth Vader. It's just Darth Vader running Walker. through every people. Yeah, I was reading. Uh, Star Wars Battlefront Twilight Company which is like the only Battlefront Star Wars book that's out um, and there's a scene in the Hoth base with Twilight Company and the leader of Twilight Company literally gets cut in half by Darth Vader like he they're trying to escort this lady out and they run into Darth hamburger Vader hamburger or hot dog style uh, hamburger style right down the middle yeah. Equal on each side? Yeah. Whoosh. Like his torso just leaves. Just like... Right through the waist. It's real bad. Very dark uh, and like But he just like force chokes three of them at the same time and chops one of them in half. And then... He just, he just needs to force choke people in a circle around him and just do a 360 with his lightsaber. All at the same height. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be funny. Oh, man. I am so excited. So I guess my major predictions. Galen put the, the exhaust port on there. Uh... So, what was it? Something at the end. The ending will be uh, handing up, like, R2-D2 rolling onto the Krillian Corvette about ready to leave with Princess Leia. We'll see maybe the backside of her. We may not see her face. If we do see her face, it'll be, like, digital. Well, you don't even see her face in the recording. Hmm? Do you? In the recording of episode four, you don't see her face, do you? Yeah, we do. Oh, do you? We're talking about R2-D2's recording yeah. of her? Yeah, but she does that in episode four. That, that happens when they get boarded. She, like, goes oh. on the side and she records that. I'm talking about, he's going to have the Death Star plans uploaded into him. Then they're going to get on. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, And it'll be, like, I don't know. I don't know if at the end, too, when they leave, if they're already under attack by the Empire and the Empire's chasing them. Or 
it happens. They get on, they leave, and then somewhere in space they get tracked, and then a de- like they, a star destroyer chases uh-huh. them. It'd be kind of it would be cool if they were like under attack, like they're based under attack, and then they get out of there and they're trying to leave, and then it chases them to Tatooine. That'd be cool. I don't know. We'll see what happens with it. Who predict who your favorite character is going to be before we see the movie? Uh, I think my favorite character will be. Um, I can't remember his name off the top of my head. Uh, it's the guy, so in the trailer, there's the blind guy. Yeah. Chirrut, I think is his name. Um, and this guy kind of like walks out of the rebel and just shoots all the guys that are around him. Yeah. That guy. With the heavy gun? With the heavy gun. I think I'm liking him a lot. Yeah. I think my blind, my blind guy is going to be my favorite. You think so? I'll have a good martial artist. I think it'll be cool. Uh, but I, I, I was kind of like the gritty realistic guy who's kind of funny and... I hope that's oh, what yeah. that character is. I don't know if that's what it'll be. Also, I heard the droid's awesome. Like Oh, Alan Tudyk? Yeah. People I've heard a lot of people say you're gonna like the droid. Interesting. So it's a different type of character for a droid to be, uh, compared to what we've had so far. Because he's like a Imperial Warbot sort of yeah. type character. Uh, that's what he's programmed to be. So he has like a really morbid sense of humor, apparently. Oh. As a character. Um, fun. Yeah. This so I think I think it'll be different. I know this is the this is the movie that has to set the tone for all the other Star Wars spinoffs. Yeah, and I think if they do well, then I think it'll help them find success. We'll fun, see. yeah, that's uh, fun. That's I think that's what we got. So thanks for listening. Next week will be our Rogue One review, impressions, yep. thoughts, vi- episode. Yep, and then after that, the Underpaid Gamers Awards. How exciting! Yay! That's fun. That's a fun time. It is a fun time. We make a bunch of fun topics awards. and we give awards out. Yep. They're all for fun. We try and I think They're all 100% serious and should be yeah. taking everything like, should be taken perfectly serious. There's no sarcasm in our awards at all. Just kidding. There's lots of sarcasm. Well, I don't excited. know what to t- I don't know. You said both. I don't know which one. I'm so believe. excited. Uh, UPG Awards anyway. 2.0. Uh, thanks for listening. Yep. Again, you can find us at underpaidgamerspodcast.com. Underpaidgamers.com. That one, underpaidgamers.com. Got it. Uh, you can email us at underpaidgamerspodcast at gmail.com. Correct. Uh, tweet at us at UPGamers. Yes. Podcast. Mm-hmm. At UPGamers Podcast. Yes. Uh, we're on SoundCloud, iTunes, and Google Play. Mm-hmm. That's, YouTube's. That's it. That. YouTube. We're on YouTube, Underpaid Gamers. Yep. Find us. See our final little sticky note. E. You know it's us. There it is. So thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next week with Star Wars Rogue One.